Another very challenging image element to composite are uh, light trails or motion. This is caused by photographing the flag in the studio while it's waving and using a strobe. So you get a little shutter drag here. Now, I'd like to place this flag outside into a, uh, a natural environment, into a blue sky environment, which I have right here. That's where I want to put it. So I need to separate the flag from the studio. But I want to maintain all of his motion trails. Well, you want to approach projects like this and really see which elements are important. First of all, of course, the flag is important. And that's a very crisp image element. And I use the pen tool to select the crisp areas. So I've got my path. I'm going to activate it, turn it into a selection, and save that as an alpha channel. Now. To get the motion trails, let's see which channels have the best motion trails. So the blue is too noisy, so I want to avoid that. Green's not bad, but the red's got very smooth contrast, it's very nice. So I'm going to duplicate the red channel and use my levels command to force the blacks to black, really get those whites to show through. You could use the mid-tone slider to open or close the highlights. And I'm going to really try to get that background to go pretty dark. So what I'm interested in are the motion trails here, this motion trail. I'm going to click OK. Now I can accentuate this motion to touch and I think I'm going to with the motion blur filter. And let's, now in camera motion blur is always better, but what this is going to do is smooth out any graininess that might have come in through the levels accentuation. <clears throat> so I have two alpha channels and I want to combine them into a separate channel. This is a great time to use the image calculations. Now the image calculations lets you combine channels and more importantly, place them into a new channel, a new document, or even an active selection. So I'm going to choose the image calculations. And my source one, it could be the red copy or alpha one, but I want the alpha one and the red copy to go together. Now, with some blending modes, here are my blending modes, the order that the sources are in, which alpha you're combining or which image channel can influence the outcome. So you might have to switch these orders to get the results that you desire. When you're adding light to image areas, you could use the lighten or the screen command, or in this instance, also the add command. They do the exact same thing. Now, I'm going to go back to screen. And what I'm seeing is I'm going to take my alpha one, which is the outline, the red copy, and my result, I want to put that into a new channel. Let me click OK. So now I have the mask and the motion blur. So I'm going to go back to RGB, combined alpha 4 and alpha 5 to make alpha 6. I'm going to return back to RGB and go to my layers. Many times when I'm experimenting with composites, I'll duplicate the background layer just in case so that I don't damage any of the original image information. And now I'm going to load Alpha Channel 6, Command, Option, or Control, Alt, 6, and click on the Add Layer Mask button. I turn off my background layer. You can see I have the flag. I have the motion blur. And that's starting to look pretty good. Let me bring in the sky. I'm going to drag that over, and I'm going to zoom out so I can position the sky. There we go. Of course, the sky has to go under the flag. And here we have a problem that shows up in a lot of composites. The blue sky has a very high color temperature, and the tungsten light used in the studio is very warm. In order for these to go together, I need the flag to be blue. So what I'm going to do is drop down to my background layer and use the eyedropper to sample some of the blue. Because I want to match these colors exactly. So 
We're going to use some of this nice sky light blue right here. Click back on the flag. Now I only want to make the flag bluer. So when I use my image adjustment command, I'm going to hold down the option alt key. I'm going to choose solid color. And the reason to hold down the option alt key is you can click on use previous layer to create clipping mask, which is, as you can see, going to clip the adjustment layer to the pixels underneath it. This is like an instant mask. And I'll click OK. Now, of course, I only want the color to show through, so I drop down to color. Uh, that looks a little heavy-handed, doesn't it? Well, you can adjust the opacity, but then you have the problem that some of that yellow is going to shimmer through again. If you're trying to work the opacity, but the color's coming through, can you see how that's showing through? What you can do is add another adjustment layer. I'm holding down my Option Alt key. I'm going to go to Hue Saturation, also clip it, and take out all the saturation. So now I just have a black and white image. And now you see none of that color is showing through, and the results are going to be a lot better. The advantage of using the solid color fill layer is, now that you've had it, added it, you can double click on it and choose a different blue from the color picker or from the image, and really fine tune how they're coming together while you're watching the results. And that's really how I like to work. I'll add the initial adjustment layer and then double click on it. See, that's two turquoise. This looks it matches the warm light down here much better. And so I can watch the results. Now, because the flag's on a layer mask, if you feel that this edge is too harsh, well, I can just blur the mask. It won't affect the pixels. I'm making sure that my mask is active. I'm just going to come over and soften this border right here because it is in motion, so people are going to expect some more softness. Take care of that really, really quickly. So, use the image calculations to combine alpha channels. And you can use the blending modes to achieve various effects. And to be safe, I recommend you place the result always into a new channel, and that way you won't have to redo any of the work in case you made a bad decision. And then on your layers, by using the clipped adjustment group, the effect will only affect the layer directly underneath it. Therefore, the natural color of the sky is still visible.